carrying on with more of the seven tools for quality measurement and today we are going to be doing XY scatter charts for quality measurement and you may have done XY scatter charts before this is a pretty common tool in Excel and honestly it's one of the more straightforward tools but again a very powerful one to find if there is correlation or um, a link between the double set of data that we're going to be collecting. So at the end of this video, you will discuss the role of ASQ and standardizing methods of measuring quality. We'll determine the quality parameters worth measuring for your product or process step and then identify when an XY scatter chart is a relevant data analysis. Well, guess what? It links back to if you're collecting two pieces of data at the same time, such as um, if you're trying to burn toast, maybe you're uh, collecting the color of the toast and the temperature of the oven at the same time. We're going to use a scatter chart for evaluating data quality and you know my approach. My approach is focused on utility and a little bit less on the stats. Once you understand the utility, then the stats start to make sense. I will identify some trends in control chart data using Q testing. So, oh, Ed, W. Edward Stemming is always there to give us a sense of encouragement. Lack of knowledge, that is the problem. And so we are going to solve that today by learning something new. Why are we going to use an XY scatter chart? Well, it helps identify correlation between paired data. Now, I say correlation. That means that there's some sort of linkage and some sort of pattern between that data. It doesn't mean causation. And so you can't guarantee that one point or one part of the data collection causes the other. It, you still could have another effect that's in there. But it is really the most useful tool for identifying correlation. You still have to dig. It is for paired data. So you have to have two data points collected at the same time. So is it color and temperature? Is it uh, temperature and weight? Um, oftentimes in food processing, it is temperature, but you need to have two sets of data. I said this before and I'll say it again. It does not prove causation. It proves that there's a relationship and correlation between that data. And so you have to dig further. It's not the, it's not the end of your analysis. And as we've said a hundred times before, these seven basic tools often lead one to another, and you've got to use some good common sense to think, well, now that I've done this investigation and this evaluation, do I need to do more or do I have a really clear direction to move next? So yeah, we're going to collect some samples in paired groups. We're going to perform our measurement. And in this case, it's actually going to be two measurements. And we need to make sure that we're prepared to do a Q-test on that data. Now, again, if you're working from a prepared template, then some of these analyses are going to be done for you. And I'm going to walk you through a prepared template right now, thanks to our friends at ASQ, the American Society for Quality. So just a reminder, because you see correlation doesn't mean causation, dig deeper and link those seven tools together. Let's jump right out. Again, I always joke that we are friends and I'm not shy about just showing you here. So I made up a fake data set and we've been talking for a long time now about burning toast. Well, let's burn some toast. So imagine in the template here, I have gone about and I have collected Using my uh, Konica Minolta color meter, I have collected the L value, X output. So L value, if you remember from doing colorimetry, L value indicates at zero how black a sample is and at 100 how white a sample is. And so a burnt toast is going to have a very low L value in our X category here. And then our Y category, i am just made up some imaginary temperatures at which I made my toast. So let's say I ran my toast through the machine at 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and I got these X values back. Now, some people say, which quadrant do I, or which, which line do I put my X and Y on? Again, focus on just collecting paired data because the rest is going to fall out here. Collect paired data. Don't worry about which one's the dependent and independent variable. Collect paired data and plug it into your tool. So 
let's jump into quick analysis here. First off, what do we see? We see a nice semi-linear pattern to this data. Now, admittedly, I made this data up out of my head, and that's okay. Sometimes I want you to see data actually working. So what are what are we doing first? In uh, first off, it's going through and doing a quadrant based evaluation. So in the first quadrant, it's noting there is zero data points. In the second quadrant, there are eight data points. In the third quadrant, there are zero data points. In the fourth quadrant, there are eight data points. And first calculation it is doing is it. So what we are doing is these red lines, first and foremost, these red lines are dividing it into quadrants. So by counting manually, we have, how many data points did we have in total? We had 16 data points in total. Actually, we had 18 data points in total. And two of them are on the line. So what we have done is gone in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So we had 18 data points. We found where is the ninth data point? So going horizontally, we found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we ran it right through the middle. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is the first quadrant line. And then the same deal going in the horizontal axis. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And in this case, we have, it actually goes through the data points. So what's interesting about doing a manual calculation on this, you do not count any of the points that are actually lying right on the line. That is, it's weird and is wacky, but that's just the way it is. And the benefit of doing it within a template is that it's going to adhere to the rules for quality measurement that are necessary. So that's why it's showing up as 16, even though we actually have 18 data points, because two of the line, or the, the, the vertical line is running through two of the data points. So it's doing the A calculation, which is taking this top left quadrant and the bottom right quadrant, or actually, yeah, the top left, pardon me, top left and bottom right added together, and is taking the bottom left for the B calculation, bottom left and top right, and adding them together. So in this case, we have zero plus zero is zero. And then we're looking for what is the minimum number and it is going to use an end, uh, pardon me, an N test table. So we're looking at how many points are we evaluating and what is the minimum value here? So from the N test table, it is looking for what is the limit? And we had 16 data points, therefore our limit is three. Is our Q value less than our limit? If it is, then our data is showing correlation. I know this is likely making your brain squish because I know my, my lovely students in food science are not necessarily statisticians, but bear with me here. Let's take a look at a second example. I ran our fake mochi. Oh, look at the messy data. Isn't that lovely? Already, just superficially, we can say, wait a second, we do not see a linear pattern here. I made up some fake data. I pulled from that histogram before and I imagined what would happen if we were running this mochi at approximately freezing temperature or minus four degrees approximately, just to keep things frozen but not so cold that the ice cream and the mochi dough doesn't flow. So we ran it, uh, set the ambient temperature at uh, minus four, but you know very well people are going to open the storage door, people are going to come in and out, the temperature is going to fluctuate up and down, and I made some imaginary numbers to say, does the weight of our mochi correlate to ambient temperature in the system? So collected some weight values and collected some ambient temperature values and put them into our chart. So again, 
the nice thing about using the ASQ uh, template is that it's going to do that calculation. So it's taking the X and Y uh, correlates between these data. First off, it's counting how many data points do we have. We had a total of 36 data points. So it would count the first 18 data points going along horizontally. So one, two, three, four, five, and it would count 18 and draw that line through the horizontal. And then similarly, going along the vertical, one, two, three, four, five, up to 18 and find the, um, find the vertical axis for setting those quadrants. Then we're starting to count the different quadrants to find out where the data points are lying. And in this case, it's going to do it for you automatically, eight, seven, nine, five. Again, we are not counting data points that are on the line. And that is a head scratcher for a lot of people, but that's just the rule. And so we follow the rules in this case. So we're counting the A quadrants, the top left and bottom right, and the B quadrants bottom left and top right, adding them together. And we're taking the minimum number here. So we're taking 12 as the minimum, 17 would be the maximum. Then we had nine, or we didn't have, how many points did we have? 36 points. We had a good number of those points lying on the line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven line, seven points lying on a line. So we can't count those. We had 29. And the N statistic, I had pulled the N statistic right from ASQ's table. So for 29 in their trend test table, they're saying the N statistic is eight. So they have plugged in eight automatically. The joy of using one of these magical tables. Is Q less than the limit? No, Q is greater than the limit and therefore the data is not correlated. So there is benefit to using one of these ASQ type tables and it is helpful to be able to have that sort of data pulling in and analyzing it to help you because again, I know the students at Niagara College haven't taken statistics and therefore I don't want them to be intimidated. I haven't taken statistics in a really long time either, but using standardized tools such as those provided by ASQ can really help you jump in and be able to do useful analyses and help demystify the statistics that are behind this. Um, again, these were really, really common um, tools and you can generate your own XY scatter plots in Excel. But again, there's so many available templates and ASQ's templates are accessible for anyone who wants to use them. Main thing is you have not seen correlation or you have seen correlation. You haven't seen causation. Ah, oh, it's been a long day. Make sure to dig deeper and use a secondary tool if necessary to identify if you have causation. There are seven more tools that you can link together and always remember you have good focus and common sense. So when you're making your ice cream sandwiches, if you have paired data, XY scatter plots are extremely useful. We will be doing stratified XY scatter plots in a moment and that allows you to start to uh, pull XY data to, uh, apart. So if you're pooling multiple measures into one set. Sometimes you need to separate those out. So I think that's my last slide. I will leave you here. And my friend Tiny says hi. He hopes you enjoy some ice cream soon. I always love to hear from you and hear your comments about what should be the next slide show or what other topics that you'd like to learn. Take care and we'll talk to you soon. Oh, don't burn toast. Never burn toast. W. Edward Stemming will never let you burn toast because he cares about you and he wants you to not be afraid of doing analysis. I'll leave you with that. All right.